Let me explain something. Do you know why we have fewer and fewer people who know how to walk with the Holy Ghost? Such that too many Christians, even Christians, are stoned by the miraculous and then they believe it's not real. You know why? Because people are too busy in their minds, too busy doing nothing. I want to show you what to do. Are, are you there? Too many are too busy doing nothing. They're not using their minds. Did you ever know what's, what's called quiet time? I, I remember some years ago, a certain preacher was telling his congregation that um, he doesn't believe in quiet time. Then he said, listen, listen. Then he said, pastor does not have, he said, pastor does not have quiet time. I was sitting up somewhere. I heard him telling the congregation that several years ago I was stunned then he said what I do is I pray all the time as I go I pray I thought is this guy all right something was wrong you can't do that. You need to have quiet time. If you're, going, <laughs> if you're going to grow, if you're going to see the extraordinary. You see, you want, to, you, want to, you want to succeed at a level that's beyond normal. The Bible says, did you read about David? He said, God has made me a wonder. David became a wonder to others. That's what God wants every one of us to be. A wonder. If you want an ordinary life, then you don't need the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, He makes your life supernatural. That means extraordinary. But you have to learn how to function at that realm. People are busy from sun up to sundown. They are busy from morning to night. Busy doing nothing. Busy going nowhere. I was sad. And then for many of them who are born again, they are still expecting that once they pray, God should do something. And that's why they are kicking their enemies. I, 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 I give my enemy uppercut in Jesus' name. I, I kick my enemy. I put my enemy in the coffin. Nonsense. It's senseless. It's unscriptural. Huh? Then somebody said, um, so he's talking about himself he says uh, uh, so um, the man now said that um, that God will punish my enemy he means that God that, that the man said God will punish him do you understand but he doesn't want to put himself they say God said will punish my enemy so they said they will kill my enemy or my, my enemy will die what kind of communication People who live in fear, they're the ones that talk like that. My enemy, my enemy, my enemy. Even what amazed me was when I found out that even young stars talk like that. Young people. Where did you get that kind of language from? From, of course, the older ones. Ha <laughs> ha! A chip off the whole block. See? That's sad. Don't talk like that. When your mind is busy, you don't get anything. Some people pray, pray, pray. After they have prayed, you just carry the things and run and hurry off. And they're busy throughout. And they come back. There's such a thing as quiet time. Are you still there? You must have it if you're going to know the Spirit more. You must have it if you're going to function in the supernatural. You must have it. This is one place where many of you at least keep quiet for a few minutes. Did I hear that the World Cup will be starting when? When's the World Cup? When is it starting? Hey, will you still come to church? <laughs> 
started on Friday. Are they playing any matches on Sunday? Why are you pretending you don't know now? I want to know. Will they play on Sunday? Morning, afternoon, or evening? Evening. So morning is free. So you'll be in church in the morning. No, think about it. Here are players. They're all going to Germany, I guess. Germany, right? And they're going to be playing there. And these young guys are making millions of dollars. Now, we're going to have millions of people who are making nothing. And they're going to spend their time. Some will even borrow money. They're going to do everything they can to be watching these guys who are making what? Millions of dollars. Watched by millions of people doing nothing. And at the end of the matches, they're going to say, ah, the way that guy scored that goal. Eh? Ah. Ah. What have you done with all the films you've been watching all these years? Phronesis. Phronesis. The lack of phronesis has put men and women in abject poverty. Not knowing how to apportion their time. For one thing or the other you know what the psalmist said it wasn't really it's a, it's in the 90th psalm but it was written by moses even though it's in the book of psalms he said teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom now listen when it says teach us to number our days many don't understand what he's talking about there he is not saying teach us to count our days is a teach us to number our days that's talking about scheduling okay he's talking about planning your day scheduling your day he says teach us to number our days so you number your day Look at the whole month. You number and you can number a day into hours, into minutes. So you know what you do on a daily basis. And he said, teach us. Which means God can teach you how to plan your day. So that you'll be more productive than the ordinary life. Most people are unproductive. What does your day bring forth? Are you still there? Now some of you are behaving like you never you, you, you didn't hear what I said now. But that's the truth. You just wake up and you know you are gone. Do you have a plan? Do you have do you plan your day? Do you plan your life? So you number your days. You say what you're going to do on Monday, what you're going to do on Tuesday. Number your day for a purpose. And I said you can number it into hours. You can number it into minutes. You decide what you're going to do before the day is over. What are the things you're going to accomplish? What are you going to accomplish this week? This is the beginning of a new week. Have you numbered your days? You know what? We expect, we expect success. We expect things to change in our lives. But we, have not, we haven't acted. From this is practical wisdom. It means that you are taking from what you've got on the inside. The idea is inside. Do you understand that wisdom you got on the inside? Sophia, inside your spirit. And you pull from there. And you analyze it with synesis. Do you understand that comprehension? Are you getting what I'm telling you? That when you start putting it to work, that's phronesis. Acting according to the wisdom you got on the inside. But most people don't. 
The man who says he's wise but doesn't act according to the wisdom is not intelligent. But we say he's intelligent. How could he be intelligent? When he doesn't act, he only talks. He says he knows it, but he doesn't know it. It's not working. You can be a 65 year old baby. This is a fact. Listen, wisdom doesn't come with age. And the Bible says the aged are not always wise. So, it doesn't come with age. It's not how long you've been there. What I'm sharing with you is what can make the difference between now and the future that God wants you to have. Most people never enter into God's promises for them, into God's plans for them. You say, how do you know? Let me give you some examples from the Bible. You remember the man Saul who was made king of Israel? Did you know that God planned for his dynasty to, to be forever? How come he failed? And it was David who took over that. God had planned that he was going to let his lineage continue forever. But the guy lost it. Didn't turn out the way God wanted. What of the children of Israel? God told them he was taking them to the promised land. Did they get there? No. It was their grandchildren, their little ones that got there. The rest of them perished in the wilderness. Why? Because the Bible says they were unbelieving. They were stubborn. So just because God has a plan for you, doesn't mean that you're going to fulfill that plan. You would have to play your role. You have to do your part. See, if you're going to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Some people think that whatever happens, they say, whatever will be, will be. If it's mine, it will come to me. That's a lie. Don't believe that. The Bible doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say if it's yours, it will come to you. Because I always believe that whatever is mine is coming to me. If it doesn't come to me, then God did not plan for it to be mine. <laughs> that is the voice of foolishness. You see, because that's human wisdom. Human wisdom reasons, why do I have to struggle? If it's coming to me, it will come to me. Okay, why didn't you stay at home? To see all the books that you read in school, they would have come into your mind. Why did you go to school? If it's mine, it will come to me. <laughs> the teacher and the headmaster would have come to you when you were in primary school and entered your mind. Isn't it true? If it's mine, it will come to me. Stay at home. The car in the garage, tell it to come and pick you inside the parlor. If it's mine, it will come to me. Why did you go into the car? Sit at the dining table and say, if the food in the kitchen is mine, it will come to me. <laughs> so when it comes to things we don't know, we pretend. Why don't you just accept that you don't know it and let somebody teach you? That's the way. Hallelujah. All right. Now, I said I was talking to you about quiet time. I know you want to hear it, right? Okay, I want to tell you what to do with quiet time. You must have a quiet time. I said, he told us, teach us to number our days. So, we must speak a period where we can stay quiet before the Lord. Now, every great man or woman in the Bible had such an experience with God. If you don't have that experience of being alone and quiet before the Lord, you will not accomplish much. Did you hear me? You will not accomplish much. Now, what I'm telling you is not just for ministers. It's something you're supposed to do in your life. If you want the creative life, you've got to have this. If you want an exceptional business life, if you want an exceptional academic life, anything, if you want to be exceptional, then you must have quiet time. Now, this quiet time, what do you do with it? I want to tell you. Now, many years ago, I would go to um, I would go to a remote area 
That's what I would do. Okay? But uh, you're in a big city now. And there's no remote area. You know what I'm talking about. So he says, well, what, what do I do? Well, it's not so much a physical thing as it is a mental thing. It is not so much where your physical body is as what you do with your mind. What you do. All right. Since you cannot find a physical wilderness to go, okay, or climb a physical mountain, because all of that was for a purpose, not because God was in the wilderness or he was on the mountain. The idea was to be away from the busy activities around you. And you step away from all those busy activities. Jesus said, enter into thy closet. Okay? So you shut your door. Now, there are people who live with some other people, so they can't, they can't shut their door. Because there are other people who are inside the same room with them. I'll give you, I'll give you an idea. I'll tell you what to do. Okay. So, find a place to be alone. And when you're alone, relax yourself completely. Turn off the light. And then do like this. Did you see me? Turn off the light. Then shut your eyes. And remain there. The first 30 minutes, you may not, you may still be trying to get yourself in. So continue until you get yourself in. Now if you're smart, put a paper and a pen close by. Because God's going to talk to you. And when you put your writing material close by, that's faith. Now here's how God deals with us. He deals with us in the arena of faith. If you do not keep a writing material close by, He will not be willing to tell you very important things. Why? Because He will tell you, you will lose them. You see that? Otherwise you say, now you get something to write. So you make sure you have it by you. That means you're ready. Now that's the beginning. Are you hearing me? Now some people are too busy for this simple thing. And this thing, a few minutes with the Holy Spirit, can change your whole life forever. He will turn you into a success and unusual success a few minutes when he tells you something to do how do i always know what to do by listening so i listen to the spirit and when he talks to you now some people say well i don't know maybe if god talks to me how am i going to know that that um uh, it's God and not my mind. Oh, that's very simple. That's very, very simple. You want to know the difference between God and your mind? It's very simple. Learn to meditate on the Word of God. Your mind will fade away. The thoughts from your own mind will fade away. Because of the overpowering... Uh, um, uh, manifestation or the overpowering strength of God's word beclouding the thoughts of your mind. See, the Spirit of God will take over. Another thing you can do is to lie down so that all your body is relaxed. You say, what if I fall asleep? Go ahead and fall asleep. 
Then the master will come and say, Sleepest thou? <laughs> At least you write that down. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you want, see, maybe you have a, a little kiosk. You know what a kiosk is? A small kiosk. You want that kiosk to become a supermarket. And from a supermarket to be a super mall. It can happen. How can it happen? By doing this thing I just told you. In the morning, give him that time. And pray. When you pray, you pray, you listen, you relax yourself. Whatever he tells you, put it down. Then, go to work. Somewhere in the day or in the night, somewhere, whatever is okay for you. There are no fast, no hard and fast rules. Pick another time and be alone with the Spirit. Speaking in tongues is the first and best way to activate in your spirit. So when you speak in tongues, you activate your spirit. The Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. Then it says, I'll pray with the spirit and I'll pray with the understanding also. So when you, it says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit pray it. So when you pray in an unknown tongue, it's your spirit that's praying. So you know it's your spirit. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Now when your spirit is therefore activated, your mind is without any understanding. It's unfruitful. So what? From there, you can now calm down. Haven't spoken in tongues and spoken in tongues and activated your spirit. Then you become calm. It won't be long before the spirit of God starts moving. You know, and you begin to experience those wonderful currents of electricity. Divine electricity. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That's wisdom, brother. That's wisdom. I'm giving you phronesis. <laughs> See, when you do that, you will surely be ahead of those who don't. It's a matter of time. Now, let me tell you some of the benefits of that. Apart from the Spirit of God talking to you at all, there's what you call um, the location of the Spirit. What do I mean? The positioning of the Spirit. See, sometimes the Spirit of God doesn't have to give you an information. Doesn't have to say anything special. But here is what will happen. Your Spirit will become more easily attuned to the Spirit of God. In other words, you will be synchronized with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Your Spirit will become synchronized with the Spirit's will through your quiet time like this what happens is God starts positioning your spirit into the very position that he has in his calendar which means you will find yourself through God's uh, synchronization in God's will in God's purpose in God's timing You'll be located in God's position for your life. And that's what he wants first. Then you start running on his calendar. Oh. Ay, 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 ay. Are you here? Are you following what I'm sharing with you? I said, apart from him talking to you, this is something that happens. As you continue to pray with the Spirit, pray with the Spirit, that means praying in other tongues, okay? And then you become quiet and, and spend time just alone. You don't have to say anything, you just be there. And then once in a while you talk in other tongues and meditate on the Word, meditate on the Scriptures. And thank God, and meditate on the Word. The Holy Spirit will be carrying out His ministry. Remember, He is the one called, He's called the Paraclet. Okay, that means one called to walk with you pari pasu. Do you understand? He's going alongside with you. Okay, so what happens is, he is the, he is the greater one. So he takes you at his speed. Now, let's go. 
so before long you find you are taking steps at the same time with the spirit then you find that you are in god's perfect will for your life oh hallelujah that's the best place to be thank you lord jesus that's the best place to be most people are living outside of the will of god most people are that's the reason for their frustrations that's the reason for their unhappiness they think someone else is responsible for their lack of joy they think someone else is responsible for the problems they are facing no nobody's responsible when you walk in the will of god you become you when you're in synchrony with the spirit of god you find that you are at peace also bible says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is look at it he says Listen, he says, whose mind is stayed. What does that tell you? It's synchronized to be the same with the Spirit. His mind is stayed on him. He will keep him in perfect shalom. The Hebrew, the Hebrew expression there says, that will keep him in shalom, shalom. He says, peace, peace. That's what the word says. He's letting you understand that expression. He says, peace, peace. What does that mean? He's dealing with peace of prosperity. That's why he uses it twice. He says, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Oh, your life was... Listen, you were raised for the glory of God. God.
Thank you. 